and uh, we are heading towards 2020. It's officially the future next year. I realize that. <laughs> like my whole life, 2020 was the future. <laughs> it's a little scary to be there. Yeah. So, so what are your predictions? You know, what are, what do you think about? Uh, are you excited about? 20? Of course, you will be. But uh, where do you see the whole uh, enterprise cloud native world is heading towards? Um, well, on public cloud, I think now the enterprise is really starting to um, build deep relationships with their with their chosen cloud providers. We've seen a lot of large organizations essentially saying, "Okay, I want to I want to work carefully with the, with the major providers, and then I want to choose one or two that are going to be my cloud partners." So we're starting to see um, organizations realize that that's the that's the work they have to do. Those are the choices they have to make. We started to see them making those choices and looking to us essentially to make sure that they they can get the maximum capability out of their one, two, three cloud providers. Um, on private cloud, it's interesting. Um, I think we're starting to see um, a, a realization that. Uh, if you can run a totally automated data center, that there is still good value in having private infrastructure. So on private cloud, it's really about total automation, right? Again, if we're going to take the cost of running a, pri a data center from where it is today with VMware and, and co to being much lower, then it has to be all open source, it has to be all automated. So that's the sort of private cloud story. Um, uh, you know, I think Kubernetes, that's done. That layer now, I think everybody understands that. So I guess the question is, what's, what's up above that? For me, what's really exciting is um, uh, the explosion in GitHub and the inc incredible diversity of, of stuff that we're seeing there, um, combined with uh, the, um, the beginnings of serverless as a general purpose proposition, right? Bringing serverless out of, of its initial role as a kind of glue framework inside public clouds. So maybe we'll see the beginnings of that really start to take root in 2020. And service mesh is also there, you know, that is also becoming a big, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't really know how to, how to read service meshes. Mm -hmm. I think they're important, um, but I can't, I can't see how to pick a winner in that environment because they, they end up, you know, again, if you've chosen if you've chosen um, uh, Amazon, then uh, you know the service mesh that comes from Amazon is going to connect you to more of the services in Amazon more easily, right? So I'm not sure that there's really a market for for service meshes as a thing independent of the underlying thing, right? Um, we'll, we'll see how it can be well. Yeah. 